Now, how do we do inference or sampling in DDPM? So, let us look at it. So, inference or sampling with DDPMs. Inference or sampling from DDPM. Sampling in a DDPM. Okay. So, how do we do this? So, unlike in a GAN or a VAE where we simply uh, push one uniform you uh, one Gaussian random variable through a network and get the samples, it does not happen this way. Okay. So, now the inference has to be done the following way, right? So, to get a sample x naught from p of x naught, which is a true data distribution, we need to run the reverse chain, we need to traverse We need to traverse through the backward process or the decoding process. Which is starting from x t, we need to get to x t minus 1, then we need to get to x t minus 2 and so on and then we should get to x, x 0. So, this is the backward process that we need to traverse from traverse uh, through. So, how do we do this? We know that this is this implies that we need to sample iteratively we need to sample iteratively from the decoding distributions which are decoding distributions which are the decoding distributions p theta of x t minus 1 given x t. So, these are the decoding distributions and we need to sample x t minus 1 from this distribution for t equal to capital T to 1. So, this is all we need to do, right? Because suppose, you know, so what does this mean? That this means that we get our x t, of course, x t comes from normal 0 1 because that is by definition. And then we have x t minus 1 comes from p theta of p theta of x t minus 1 given x t right and then we get x x t minus 2 is sampled from p theta of x t minus 2 given x t minus 1 and so on and we keep doing this and finally we get or x naught which is a sample from p theta of x naught given x1 okay this is what we need to do we need to iteratively sample from the decoding distributions that's all now do we know how to sample from this distribution turns out that we do because so x we know that so we have we have x t minus 1 So, x t minus 1 are samples from p theta of x t minus 1 given x t, right? This is what the decoding distributions are. But p theta of x t minus 1 given x t, this is the decoding or the reverse distribution that we have modeled so far. What is this? This is actually a Gaussian distribution We said because we said that the reverse or the backward process is a Markov chain with a Gaussian transition uh, x t minus 1. And what is the mean of this? The mean of this is mu theta. So, this is how we have modeled this mu theta of x t and the variance is sigma q squared times identity. Right? This is what we have been uh, uh, modeling our distributions with. Okay? okay. So, how do we know how to sample from it? Again, reparameterization is what we know. So, this is x which means that x t minus 1, if we take this, if we take a sample epsilon from normal 0 1, okay? and reparameterize. So, what we need is a sample from a Gaussian distribution with a particular mean mu theta and a particular variance. Now, if we know the mean and variance, we know how to get a sample from the Gaussian distribution with that particular mean and variance thanks to the reparameterization trick. How do we do that? We take a sample epsilon from normal 0 1, we add that mean to that and just scale the random variable with that particular variance that is it. If we do this then we have a sample from the particular distribution this is the reparameterization. Okay. Now, what is mu theta here? 
So mu theta here now will be mu theta star because we have already tried a neural network that would give us mu theta. Okay. So if you want to use the formulation where the neural network is regressing over uh, mu theta, then you can just take the output of this neural network itself. That's it. Or if you want to take the formulation where uh, we were, we are, we are, we are regressing over x naught, then mu theta star of x t has to be computed this particular way, which is one minus uh, alpha t minus one bar times uh, root of alpha t divided by one minus alpha t bar into x t okay, plus one minus alpha t times root of alpha t minus one bar divided by uh, one minus alpha t bar times x cap of theta star, which is the neural network, okay, x t. That's it, okay. So, do we know x t? We know x t because we have started from x capital T, okay. So, at every time t, we know what the, the next time step is uh, because uh, that is we are, we are going in the reverse direction. So, we know x t. Uh, do we know x cap theta star? We do because we have a trained neural network that can take that x t and give you an x, x, x cap theta star, which, which means that we know mu theta star, which means that we know x t minus 1. Okay, that is how we do it. Let us write that as, as an algorithm. So, inference, inference in a DDPM. So, what do we do? Start with start with a random point x t from normal 0 1 ok. So, while or rather for for t equal to capital T t minus 1 through 1. So, we are we are we are downgrading we have to do do what do we need to do we just have to get get x theta star of x t from the neural network. This is one forward pass. So, what do we have to do? We take the trained neural network that we have here. So, if I do I still have the same thing in my clipboard? Yeah. So, we try we take the trained neural network. this is theta star now okay we get this we get x so this is one only one forward pass that we do forward pass to get x cap theta star at x t okay once we do this we make x t minus 1 as mu theta star x t plus sigma q squared times the epsilon where epsilon is some other sample drawn from normal 0 1 ok and also we have the mu q star given by this particular expression. Now as I said if you are uh, looking at uh, the neural network uh, that is regressing over mu theta star directly, then you do not have to compute this. You can just take the output of the neural network and add it to this particular thing. That is it. Okay. If you do this for t number of steps, okay, capital T number of steps, then the output or return, return x naught. Okay. So, this will now be a new sample. or a new generated sample. So, let me call it as x naught star or x naught is ok. New generated sample. Okay. So, please note that uh, unlike in a, in, a, in a VAE or a GAN, we will not get the generated sample in one step, in one shot. Rather, we will get it in capital T number of time uh, shots, okay. which means that to sample in a DDPM, 
TDPM. We need to go through T number of forward passes. Forward passes through the we need to or rather not go through, we'll say we need to perform need to perform T number of forward passes through the trained neural network. Or regressor. See that is why DDPM uh, is known to be uh, slower compared to uh, GANs and VAEs in generation. So because you know we need to do capital T number of forward passes. So why do we have to do capital T number of forward passes? Because all we are doing is that we are running through the decoding chain or the decoding uh, or the reverse Markov process. And to do that, we have to every time sample from xt minus 1 given xt, okay, where we start from x capital T, which is normal 0 1, and we keep repeatedly sampling from this distribution. How do we sample from the distribution? We know that that distribution is Markovian, okay, uh, or sorry, rather Gaussian. We know that it is Gaussian with the mean mu theta star and uh, the fixed variance. This mean is what we are uh, getting as an output through the neural network. Okay. Either we get uh, the mean directly as the output as we saw in the, the first formulation or uh, we get uh, something okay, uh, which can be used to find out the, the mean that we need. Okay. So once we get the mean that we need because you know mu q star is simply uh, in this formulation where we are regressing over x naught the mean that we need is simply x t uh, times uh, the output of the neural network uh, with some appropriate scales. Once we get uh, the mu, the mean of that distribution, sampling from it is easy because all you need to do is uh, sample a random point from uh, Gaussian 0, 1 and then reparameterize it to get it, get a sample from uh, p theta of, so this is actually, what is this? This is sampling from So sampling from p theta of x t minus 1 given x t. So through reparameterization, we just sample from p theta of x t minus 1 given x t, right? That is what we do. And we do it uh, repeatedly for uh, all t's from uh, t equal to capital T to 1. So if we do that, the final sample that we get is, is the novel data point that we are seeking from that we are seeking okay now you can look at this entire process of uh, repeatedly sampling from uh, p theta of uh, x t minus 1 given x t as the denoising right because if you see the uh, input process as uh, uh, the process of noising the forward process as uh, noising the reverse process here can be seen as the process of uh, denoising okay so and that's why the name we uh, that's why the name that we have here which is the denoising diffusion um, this is yeah, 1 minus alpha t. Yeah, that's why we have the name denoising diffusion probabilistic models. What, what we are actually doing is simply taking from the taking from uh, noise. Okay, so what is noise here? Noise is a sample from normal 0 1 and slowly one step at a time we are quote unquote denoising uh, that particular noise so that we get a point that, that we have sampled from the data distribution. Now, why should this work? Please recall that all we are doing uh, so far is trying to find a p theta, so the initial principles of generative modeling that we have, right? we are trying to find a p theta using a latent variable model such that the KL divergence between p theta and p x is minimized. So we are trying to find a model distribution which is close to the data distribution by minimizing the KL divergence. So minimizing the KL divergence is equivalent to maximizing the log likelihood. and uh, uh, log likelihood cannot be maximized in a, uh, in, a, in, a in a latent variable model. So we constructed uh, the lower bound which is called the evidence lower bound and we took the hierarchical VAE approach where we had multiple uh, latent spaces, multiple multiple latent spaces and then we constructed a Markov chain over the latent space Okay, and the forward distribution or the encoding distribution was fixed, nothing was to be learned. All that we need to learn was the decoding distribution which is also a Markov chain. Okay, with Gaussian transitions, 
what did we do? We simply learned the parameters of the Gaussian transitions of the decoding Markov chain. That's all. And sampling in a DDPM is simply running through the decoding process, which is nothing but a Markov process with Gaussian transitions, whose mean we have learned using data, okay? the, which is given by the neural network. So again, repeating the neural network that we train in a DDPM does not give you samples from the distribution. Uh, that we are trying to model. It will simply give you the mean of the Gaussian transition conditional distributions of the decoding or the reverse Markov chain that we transition over to get the sample of interest. Okay? So, what we have to do is that we need to simply uh, uh, transit for capital number of capital T number of times to get one sample from a DDPM, which makes it a little slower in inference, uh, correspond, I mean, in comparison with uh, VAEs and GANs, where the generation is a single step process. You know, you just have to do one forward pass to get the data. Here, you need to, you need to do capital T number of uh, times. However, the training in a DDPM is extremely simple because all we are doing is uh, solving a regression task. Okay. And because there is no saddle point optimization problem or the posterior collapse problems, the training is known, known to be much more stable and that's why these models are the state of the art models. In all the discussions so far, I have not told you how to get alphas. See, alphas are also taken to be hyperparameters. Let me just write that down during training. So, t is fixed and we fix alpha 1 through alpha t are hyperparameters which are fixed between 0 and 1, 0 and 1, okay. Typically taken to be a reducing schedule, uh, they, they take, take it between uniformly spread it between 0 0.99 to 0 0.9 or something, that's a hyperparameter. The details of it will be discussed during tutorials. But yeah, so the idea is that the training with the DDPM is much simpler and the sampling entails forward process uh, for capital T number of times and uh, all we are doing while we are uh, sampling uh, while we are generating a sample is repeatedly hopping through the reverse Markov chain with Gaussian transitions whose mean is given by the output of the neural network right so that is how one would sample um, novel data points from a DDPM so again neural network is not giving the the generated sample rather it, it is giving you the mean of the distribution through which we hop to get a novel data point so this takes us to the end of uh, training end of ddpm training and inference and inference so the next topic that we should see is that see so far the formulation that we have for DDPM only samples from unconditional distributions that means that it can generate an image or some text or some data point. It is not equipped yet to sample from conditional distributions which means that you know if you look at uh, all the state of the art uh, image generation models that you have you know including uh, GPTs, uh, Ghibli etc and all that what they are doing is given a particular text it will generate uh, an image corresponding to that particular text which is which, which is translated into sampling from the conditional distributions. Now, the next question that we will be taking is how do we modify the formulation of DDPM so that it starts sampling from a conditional distribution. The typical application is text conditional generation. So there are two methods to do it. One is called the classifier guided diffusion and the other is called classifier free guidance. So we will look at both of these methods and see how to modify this formulation of DDPM to suit uh, sampling from conditional distributions.